Hello everybody and welcome back. My name's Laura and I'm really pleased you're back on my channel and welcome back to something I started quite a long time ago and I haven't done one of these videos for quite a while and I'm really excited to have the return of Totem Tuesday. Yeah, Totem Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I remember I started this back in Ooh, about five years ago and um, every Tuesday approximately there was a video looking at a different totem animal now I'm being aware at the moment that I'm probably not going to have this as a weekly thing because I'm just going to set myself up for doing too much but I'm really excited that at least once a month if not twice a month there's going to be a totem Tuesday which is a video about a specific totem animal where we look at all the different aspects that we can of that totem animal so their facts about the animal themselves folklore and myth and ways you connect with them in a totem way and I'm really excited to bring back Totem Tuesday and if you are interested in looking at totem animals um, I have got a huge playlist already on my channel of Totem Tuesday I think I need to add more of them to it because there's lots of videos but I think there's only a certain amount in the playlist but there's about 40 odd 50 40 odd videos on, on Totem Tuesday I think um, so if you want to go and check them out, please do. I'll put a link to the playlist down here. And um, just a few other housekeeping things before we get started on this week's Totem Tuesday. Um, if I'm really, really excited to share my new Patreon page as well as it's brand new. It's the first time I've talked about it on YouTube as well. Um, there'll be a video talking more about that. But um, if you would like to join the tribe on Patreon, there are special treats and goodies in store for you. I have Patreon only videos, newsletters, meditations, offers, paintings, and spells and readings. There's weekly energy readings there just for Patreon. And so it's really, really simple. If you want to go and get involved, I'd be really honoured if you'd follow my work. And if you want to find out more and get more um, personal updates from me, do go to my Patreon link there. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you more about that later, but um, if you're interested in getting more from me um, and receiving more goodies, then do pop over there. I'd be super honoured, and the cats would too, but the cats are snoozing right now. You know, it's hard work being a cat. So also on the subject of, uh, subject of totems, if you missed my Totem Awakening courses that have been running for the last two years, I'm running the next Totem, I'm rebooting it, so I'm redoing the notes, redoing the videos, because it was the first online course that I ran, um, and as I said, I was on Goddess Awakening, and Fairies Awakening, and Totems Awakening too as well, and I've really got much more um, pleased with how I put these courses together you know with everything you gain experience and even though I love Totem's Awakening the course is getting rebooted and revamped so if you would like to join Totem's Awakening rebooted there's a link to my website down there with more information and I'm doing a video about that soon and that will be starting at the be in, in April this year if you want to join Totem's Awakening but there's a lot more information coming so we've got loads going on so Totem's Awakening or oh, I'll do a video about that soon I want to talk more about it but if you're interested in connecting with your Totem animals if you're if you're interested in finding out how the totems can help you with your sole purpose, with your life, and how you can help the totem animals and the animal kingdom as well, um, it is the course for you. It's very practical, it's very shamanic, it's very um, active and creative. We really connect on an emotional, spiritual and personal level with the animal spirits. So if you would like to join, um, I'd be super honoured and super pleased and very excited. So, um, on to the subject of the day, and that is the first Totem Awakening of a while, to Totem Tuesday of a while. Yeah. And I am really, um, oh, you see, my eyes are a bit wet and watery because I was listening to a song relating to this totem just before I started recording, and my eyes always fill up um, when I hear it and I'll talk to you about that shortly, but I think that's very apt for this totem this week because it probably tells you in the title, but um, this Totem Tuesday is all about the seal and uh, yeah what a super emotional animal and, uh, and the, what I was getting um, emotional about was I was listening to the song from Song from the Sea have you have you seen Song from the Sea? you better have Song of the Sea oh gosh what it's called I was listening just now Song of the Sea uh, yeah Song of the Sea and that's a wonderful animation and you probably all have seen it and if you haven't go see it and I'll put a link about that down there as well because I'm almost envious of you if you haven't seen it because it's, you know, just seeing something beautiful for the first time with the songs, with the animation, with the story, it's just utterly wow. So, yeah, I was listening to that just before I started recording, so my eyes were, ooh. Um, but that's okay because the seal is a deeply emotional and soulful animal. So as I was doing research for this Totem Tuesday about the seal, um, 
I had this memory flashback of something I'd totally forgotten about from when I was a child, that um, when, um, we, when I used to live in Leicester, so it's in England, that's right in the middle of the country, and um, it's about two hours drive to the sea. Um, me and my mum and my stepdad, we used to go down to, to Hunstanton in Norfolk, which was the nearest sort of seaside place to us. And I'd totally forgotten that I used to visit the seal sanctuary there and that it was literally one of the most um, exciting and lovely parts of my holiday. I think I used to try and make my mum take me more than once in a week because I just was so happy to see the seals and so excited. And so last night I was doing this research and I was just again a bit tearful remembering these visits to the seal sanctuary. So I was checking it out online and yes a seal sanctuary in Norfolk still exists in Hunstanton and um, there's also one in Scarborough and there's one in Cornwall, so I think this spring or summer I should be making a trip to the Cornish Seal Sanctuary. Um, so that was a super lovely memory that I had, and just I think that's some of the messages of Seal as going deep into emotions, into the subconscious. But I want to hit you with some Seal facts first. As normal with these videos, we don't just talk about the myth, we talk about their uh, facts. And I have to write facts down because I never remember any facts. So, um, obviously uh, seals are mammals, but they're mammal sea mammals. They're mammals that live both in the sea and on the earth. So this is going to be a very important part of their totem energy. Um, but seals are mainly more elegant, more comfortable in the sea, but they come up onto the land to give birth, to rest, to mate and to to regain their energy and recuperate. So that's an really important thing. Um, so there's a difference between seals and sea lions. I'm talking more about seals today, but sea lions are more elegant on the earth than they are on the water, and seals are the other way around. Um, they come, seals come from the, <laughs> here's my pronunciations again, Penopedia order, and that means, um, I think it means uh, finned feet or feathered feet. I think that's what Penopedia means. And they come from the family Phocidae, for Cidae, for Cidae. Yeah, my Latin isn't a strong point. Um, and if you are looking at the fur seals and the sea lions, they come from the family Otteridae. What we pronounce differently. But I think Otteridae is an interesting word because I like this fact here that um, seals evolved from otter-like ancestors from the shores of North, the North Atlantic around 15 million years ago. 15 million years ago. So that is, I have a moment thinking about that. Wow, my geeky self is very excited. Um, they are strictly carnivores and they are, apart from sharks and porpoises, um, one of the sea's top predators, which is a really good thing about the seal as well because they look very calm and sweet and beautiful and lovely some of the time, but they can go from aggressive kind of predator mode to chilled and calm and enjoying themselves the next minute later. So they have those two aspects, two energies to them. And I remember when I was at uni in Cornwall and we were out surfing, that makes me sound like I can surf. I was terrible, but I was like trying to surf. Um, and a friend got his foot bitten by a seal and he wasn't thinking they were sweet right then, I can tell you. <laughs> he was quite afraid. Um, yeah, and so looking at mainly seals, not so much sea lions today, you can see the difference. I think seals are a bit bigger than sea lions and sea lions have external ears where seals have interior ears, not eels, inner ears. And again, that's going to be quite an important part of the totem energy we're looking at today with the seals. Um, so there's grey seals, and they mainly are around the North Atlantic coast, the west coast of Canada, the Faroe Islands, Norway, Russia, Northeast Russia, Baltic Sea, the British Isles. And in the British Isles, the majority of seals are in, around Scotland. And you have the common seals who are smaller than the grey and they're a little bit more spotty looking than grey seals and they have little snub noses as well and you can see them in the North Pacific, around the UK, the North Atlantic and yes, so um, yeah there's different types of seals all over the world, so there's different seals but we're mainly looking here at the grey seals and the common seals I think for my totem Tuesday this week but you can research different kinds of seals if you are drawn to a different seal, there's leopard seals and different seals as well, um, different types. Um, but interesting fact around the seals for their swimming ability is they can dive for up to 45 minutes. So that's a long time. <laughs> they can dive up to 45 minutes and they can dive to 850 meters. Wow. And um, that's, if you're into feet, that's 2,500 feet. 
Ooh, that's exceptionally, exceptionally deep. So they slow their heartbeat down when they're diving to seven beats per minute so that they can conserve energy, conserve breath and survive that experience of diving so um, so deeply and so for such a long time. Now seven's going to come as a seven's going to come as a number of importance later as well. But I think that's really, really interesting. Um, so I'm just going to any more facts that I want to say about them, actual physical facts. I think that's it for my physical facts right now. They may come back a few later. Um, they're very, oh yeah, they um, they nurture their young little pups, seal pups on land. And the milk of the seal is one of the most richest there can be. They need to put on weight very quickly to survive um, the cold waters around around the, on the coast and the sea. So they have very rich, nourishing milk. And that's something important for the totem energy later as well. Put my facts down, put my facts down. Um, obviously you can find out more facts about seals and research them as well. Again, the seal in the UK, the seal sanctuary website is really lovely to have a little look at. And um, yeah, other things as well, research your seal facts. And now we move on to the seal folklore. So um, if you are of Celtic descent or from the UK and at all interested in fairy lore and mythology, then you may well have heard of the Selkie. So Song from the Sea is linked to that as well, the film I was talking about. Um, but the Selkie is a really favourite myth and story of mine, very evocative. And this myth originated around the Scottish islands and the Shetland islands and around the coast of Scotland and Ireland. And I think in Iceland as well, I think I read in Iceland as well, they have this myth. Um, the Selkie is a seal spirit, so a seal's the three or seals came to land at night, especially into the full moon, and they would shed their shed their seal skin to reveal a beautiful woman or a handsome man underneath um, underneath the the seal skin, and they would dance under the full moon, or they would come to earth. Sometimes it would be said they'd come to earth to seduce mortal people, and sometimes it would be seen that mortals would be fascinated by the sight of seeing the Selkies dance or be under the full moon, and they would be a bit naughty, and they would steal the Selkie skin, and the Selkie skin is the Selkie's power to shapeshift into seal form, and to have the power of the sea and the power of the earth, and by stealing the Selkie skin it would mean that the, that the Selkie was bound to earth, they couldn't return to the sea. Usually these tales happen that the Selkie does fall in love with the person, who, you know, this person, and they're happy for a while, as in most fairy stories, and often they have children. But as happy as the woman or man, usually it's the woman that stays, the woman or man is with their human lover, after a while the call of the sea is just too strong and they become quite sad and they become quite depressed. And they, the call of the sea is stronger than their love for their family, or at least as strong as their love for their family. And it's usually the firstborn, in most myths, child that finds the hidden sulky skin and returns it to the mother unknowingly, unwittingly, and often the, when that happens the call for the sea is so strong, the need to be whole is so strong because it's been living, the selkie has been living a half-life, as happy as it has been and as beautiful as it's been, the, you know, they've not been able to return to their true form. And so the Selkie takes the skin and returns to the sea, usually. And the bereft father and the bereft family sometimes see the seal in returning to shore to keep an eye on their family. Um, and sometimes the children of the Selkie family have the ability to shapeshift as well. So there's a lot of layers in that story about your true self, your soul skin, the ability to be wild and free and to be tamed and care for the sea. And obviously people, we come from the sea and we have that longing to return to the sea in one level, even though we're not great at swimming. <laughs> it's like seals are anyway. Um, so there's a huge, a huge amount of lore and layers of energy about your true self, your soul self, being kept, being free, that goes with Selkie. But it's a sad tale because often it doesn't really work out for anyone, <laughs> it, but it does show you a lot of the potential for sadness and longing in the human soul, I think, is reflected with the sel Selkie myth. That's why we like Song from the Sea, because it just re really, oh, it brings up that longing to be free, to be, be of the sea, but longing to be loved as well and to have love, and to have the family, and to be complete and whole. So the Selkie myth 
There's, also, there's different varieties of it, the selkie man, the selkie woman. I read, I meant to bring it down actually. Um, I read this book last year um, by Susan Fletcher who wrote one of my favourite stories of all time, Witchlight. If you haven't read it, read it. It's one of my favourite. Again, if you want to cry and have an amazing witchy tale, Witchlight is like my, f I might do a book review of some of my favourite ones because Witchlight is without a doubt one of the top. Um, but she also wrote the Dark Silver Sea, I think it's called. I will check and make sure that's what it's called. Um, and I bought that last year to read, and that's a modern take on the Selkie myth as well. And and that story is set amongst grief and longing for people. It's a seafaring island, a longing for people that have been lost to the sea and lost to fishing and accidents and that kind of thing. And the Selkie myth is born from so much hardship and loss. So, um, yeah, this is the tearful, <laughs> um, soulful aspect of the seal. Because in the Druid Animal Oracle, the seal, there, what, what they write at Philip Cargon writes about it in there, is that longing is one of the words that we associate with the seal. And dilemma, being torn between the land and the sea. Yeah, so this, it's a beautiful energy. And when we look at a seal's eyes, when we can look at them bobbing above the water and we see their eyes, they seem to reflect absolute soulful beauty, like so much depth. Their wet eyes seem to reflect the whole myriad of emotions, don't they? They can be joyful, but they can show you this huge depth. Um, I feel like they can show us, as a totem energy, the depths of our own souls, the depths of our um, wild imaginings, and they bring it to the surface and they bob back down again. So we just get a glimpse of that magic and they return to the sea. But within the myths, it's not just the Celtic lands that have um, seal myths. Um, the Inuit um, tribes, I mean the Inuit people, they pretty much relied on seals for their food and for their livelihood, for their coats, for their clothing. When they hunted and hunt seals, not one bit of that seal is left to waste. Everything is used because in that way it's really honourable and respectful. Um, they rely on the seals for their life. And there's a, an Inuit story of um, Inuit legend that the, um, the first woman um, turned herself into a bear and then from that bear form all uh, sea mammals emerged including the seal and the sea lion and then you have the um, Sedna tale where Sedna was, was not a nice story with Sedna but her, she, her father ditched her into the sea and she tried to get back up into the father's bow he cut her fingers off and they turned into sea animals and she herself turned into sea animals in, in, in the sea and the goddess of the sea so yeah um, there's some very important uh, three more myths as well there's just a couple I'm very um, aware of the Selkie myth being from the UK um, and uh, yeah I love that myth very strongly um, but like a lot of fairy human interactions there's that longing and that parting that often goes along with it so if you are if you have seal as a totem um, or you are working with seal from a time or just fascinated by seals now i'm doing this i'm more remember as a child how fascinated by seals i was and how much they're an important part of my life and i really feel want to reconnect with that energy um as i mentioned earlier seals have um inner ears not outer ears so it a big message of seal totem is trusting your inner voice is trusting your inner knowing maybe rather listening to what everybody else is saying so asking yourself are you really listening to the to the right people are you tuning into your own inner knowing inner voice people with seal as a totem will really need to develop their understanding of their own inner voice and their own inner knowing and really trust that and follow it through creativity and imagination are huge huge um, important aspects of seal totem so if you do have seal totem or you're working with seal for a while expect your imagination to be to be living in your dream world to be open and fluid to the land of dreams creativity imagination and the brilliant aspect of seal as a totem is they dive deep into the imagination but they bring those treasures back to earth to be grounded so if you're someone that lives in your head or lives in your dreams and um, struggles to manifest it, seal could be a wonderful animal to connect with because 
as we have said, they come back to land to mate and to give birth. So to give birth to your projects and your dreams, you can go off into the dreamlands of water, but you can come back to earth to to birth your own projects. So they can be great at balancing the water and the earth energies and the dreaming, the creative depths and the manifesting that. So listen to your dreams and your imagination. You could have some amazing dreams if you're working with Silas Atota, maybe lucid dreaming or really getting a lot of messages through from your dream world. Um, and as water is the sort of the symbol of the primal cauldron of life, of emotions, of soul, of dream, um, expect those areas to be important to you and you can gain many riches from diving into your emotional world and your dream life. So you'll probably feel very deeply if you're a seal person, but and it may be hard for you to translate that into a human world, but it is worth working on that balance. And uh, also seals can be quite changeable. As I said, they can be quite angry and fighting aggressive one minute and they'll be totally chilled the next. So that could be something about your own emotional <laughs> changeability if you have seal as a life totem. Um, so working with creativity, working with nourishing your soul, nourishing your personal inner world so that you can grace the outside world with those treasures that you're finding are huge elements of seal totem. And maybe that sense of needing to be by the sea, needing to be in those in-between places. Um, in-between is a huge element of seal totem law and hence they're very linked to your creativity if you're a seal person. could be linked to fairy because of the whole selkie and fairy between the worlds energy and also with selkies as i mentioned the seven heartbeats per minute is what the seals will reduce their heartbeats to when they're diving and it was said that for a lover a human lover to call their selkie lover to shore they would cry seven tears into the ocean to beckon their lover to them and I remember being, I always find, um, well, not always, it's happened twice, <laughs> but when I go to Tintagel, which is one of my favourite places on earth, in Cornwall, I often, twice, that might have been three times actually, but you know, often, I'm kind of saying maybe two or three times, but there have been special times, have, in that magical place I've ever been, um, you can see that sometimes see the seals bobbing up in that epic landscape and it just takes your breath away it really really truly does and they've come up at very special times and i was leading a guided tour of some lovely german tourists there in october last year and we were just mesmerized by watching this seal bob up and felt really blessed when we saw its little head bobbing up way below in in the ocean so yeah really really special when you see a you feel very, it feels almost like a fairy sighting when you see a seal at sea so I think that's all I was going to say about this inner seal totem. Um, yeah, the soulful energy, the subconscious energy. I'm looking at any of the keywords I've put. Um, I think that kind of about is really. They do have a protection and during changes in your life as well. And to be really in tune with your emotions and, and sometimes it is those feelings of that aching, that longing for something you don't have or something you feel you've lost or something you can't even name sometimes. Um, but searching for that love and that longing can be a, uh, an aspect of seal totem. But that searching can create some beautiful art in some ways. So, yes, I hope you've enjoyed the first this totem Tuesdays. There's going to be more, and I might go diving into the ocean animals a bit more. I'm going to look at some different um, species of whales, um, I think, next. Um, I can't remember what I've done. This it was I did start five years ago, so I'm gonna have to go back over the <laughs> over the archives to find what totem animals I have already done. Actually, so I don't repeat myself. But if you have any requests, do pop them down there. As I mentioned in that video, as well, I do offer uh, sacred sites tour guiding around the West Country, Glastonbury down to Cornwall, and the surrounding areas. There's more about that on my website. So if you are visiting this area of Avalon or Cornwall and you would like a guided tour for myself which would include geeky facts, folklore and some meditation and magic and drumming as well. Um, do contact me. Um, I've done it for the last three years but I haven't really advertised it, it's been more word of mouth but I'm sort of really loving it so I'm talking about it more at the moment. Um, so yeah, let me know. So that's a, um, a lovely lot of stuff about seals. If you haven't seen um, Song of the Sea, do watch that. and. Um, Go to the coast, maybe find some land around you where you can connect with the seals. What I did want to say also is I like to put in a bit of um, uh, 
uh, awareness as well. In um, now with the Inuit people, when they kill their seals, they use them and they don't overkill. But in Canada, there is a seal cull that has killed a ridiculous amount of seals. And if you want to go to IFAO, um, the International Fund for Animal Welfare page, I'll put the link there as well, um, to find out more and to make a petition against the culling, the needless culling of thousands and thousands, I think millions of seals, do go to the IFAO page, a charity website, and find out more. Um, okay, that's enough for me for today, you guys. See you all really soon. Bye.